Hello and welcome to a video presentation on simple interest. Here's what you'll learn. How to solve problems involving simple interest. Interest is money. When you open up a savings account at a bank, the bank will pay you money in the form of interest for saving with them. Banks pay you interest because they want your money. When you save money with them, they can turn around and lend that money out to people who need loans and then charge those people interest. That's one way that banks make money. The percentage rate of interest you earn or owe can vary from bank to bank and even from day to day. If you're a saver, you should always look for the highest rate of interest you can get. And if you're a borrower, you should always look for the lowest rate of interest you can get. There are several ways to calculate how much money you can earn in interest if you're a saver or how much money you will pay in interest if you're a borrower. This lesson will focus on one method called simple interest. The formula for calculating simple interest is I equals PRT. I is the amount of interest in dollars. P is the principal in dollars. It's the initial amount of money saved or borrowed. R is the interest rate percentage, always in decimal form. And T is the time period, always in years. With this formula, you can calculate the amount of interest earned or owed over a specific period of time by multiplying the principal, interest rate, and time, P, R, and T, together. Now let's take a look at some examples. In this case we have a principal amount of $600, an interest rate of 7%, a time period of 3 years, and we want to know how much money or interest we can make. Let's start by writing our simple interest formula off to the side for reference. We know it's I equals PRT. Now we're looking for I in this case, so we're going to leave that as is in our equation. So let's start by writing I equals. Now the problem says P, the principal, is $600. So I'm going to replace P in the formula with the number 600 in our equation. The rate is 7%. So let's replace R in the formula with 0 0.07 because that's the interest rate 7% in decimal form. Finally, we have a time period of three years, so we're going to replace T in the formula with the number three. Now we just multiply the numbers together, and we can take them two at a time to make it simpler. So let's start with 600 times 0 0.07. That's going to give us 42. So our equation now looks like I equals 42 times 3. Now let's go ahead and multiply the 42 and 3 together to get I equals $126. What that means is $600 invested for 3 years at a 7% rate would earn $126. Let's look at another problem. This time we have I, the interest amount. It's $212.75. The rate is 5%. Time period is 10 years and we're looking for the amount we start with, which is the principal. So let's write our simple interest formula off to the side for reference. I equals PRT. Again, we're looking for P in our formula. And the problem says I is $212.75. So let's go ahead and start by replacing I in the formula with 212.75. Now we're looking for P, so we're just going to leave P as is in our equation, so let's write down a P. The interest rate in this problem is 5%. So let's go ahead and replace R in the formula with 0 0.05, because that's the interest rate 5% in decimal form, the way we need it. And the time period is 10 years. So let's replace T in the formula with the number 10. Now on the right side, we can go ahead and multiply the two numbers, 0 0.05 and 10 together, and that's going to give us 0 0.5. So our equation is now 212.75 equals 0.5p. 
Now we can solve for p by canceling out the 0 0.5 that's with it. And we do that by dividing both sides of our equation by 0 0.5. Now on the left, 212.75 divided by 0 0.5 is 425.5. And on the right, 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.5 cancels out, leaving us with just the variable we're looking for, p. So we know a principal amount of $425.50 invested for 10 years at a rate of 5% would earn $212.75. Now what if we have an I of $120, P of $400, T of 5 years, what would be the rate, R? Again, let's write our simple interest formula off to the side for reference, I equals PRT. And this time we're looking for R in the formula. The problem says I is $120, so we can start our equation by replacing I in the formula with 120. The principal amount is $400, so we'll replace P in the formula with the number 400 in our equation. We're looking for R, so just leave that as is in the equation, so just write down an R. Finally, the time period is 5 years, so we'll replace T in the formula with a 5. Now on the right side, we can multiply 405 together. That gives us 2,000. So our equation is now 120 equals 2000 R. We solve for R now by dividing both sides by the number 2000. On the left, 120 divided by 2000 gives us 0 0.06. And on the right, we know the 2000s will cancel, leaving us with our variable R. Now our answer is in decimal form but we want our R, or interest rate, to be in percentage form. So we're going to turn our decimal answer back into a percent by multiplying 0 0.06 by 100. That makes 0 0.06 the same as 6%. So $400 invested for five years at a 6% rate would earn $120. Now let's look at this problem. I is $440, P is $2,200, and R is 5%. This time we're looking for the time period, or T. Let's write the simple interest formula off to the side for reference. I equals PRT. Again, we're looking for T in the formula, so we can start by replacing I with the $440 in the problem. The principal amount is $2,200, so we're going to replace P in the formula with 2,200 in our equation. We know R is 5%, and we're going to replace R then with 0 0.05, because that's the interest rate 5% in decimal form, the way we need it. And finally, we're looking for T, so just leave T in our equation as T. Now on the right side, we can multiply together 2,200 and 0 0.05. That's going to give us 110. So our equation is now 440 equals 110t. We can solve for t by dividing both sides by 110. And that means on the left, 440 divided by 110 would give us 4. And on the right, the 110s will cancel, leaving us with just the variable t. So $2,200 invested for four years at a 5% rate would earn $440. Now let's work a word problem. Melissa wants to buy a car. She puts $2,900 into savings bonds that pay a simple interest rate of 5.9%. How much money will Melissa have at the end of five years to spend on a car? Now let's write our simple interest formula off to the side again for reference as we always do. I equals PRT. Now let's look at the words in the problem. The problem tells us Melissa is investing 
$2,900. That's the amount we're starting with, so that's our principal. So we're going to replace P in the formula with 2,900 in the equation we're writing. Next, the interest rate is 5.9%. We have to turn that into a decimal. That would be 0 0.059 as a decimal. So the R in the formula will be 0 0.059 in our equation. Finally, the time period, five years. That's going to be T in our equation. So replace T with the number five. Now we're almost done with our equation. We have to finish setting up what's missing. And what's missing is the first part, the I equals. Now we can go ahead and multiply 2,900 and 0 0.059 together. That's going to reduce the equation to I equals 171.1 times 5. Now multiply the 171.1 and the 5 together, and that gives us a total amount of interest of $855.50. But that's not the answer to this problem. The problem asks how much Melissa has to spend on a car. Now certainly she can spend the interest that her money just earned, the $855.50. But she can also use her principal, the amount she started with, the $2,900. So we have to add the interest and the principal amounts together to get the total amount she can spend on a car. It turns out that Melissa will have $3,755.50 to spend on a car. Now I want to wrap up this lesson with some final thoughts on simple interest. Many simple interest problems may ask for the total amount of money you have in an account that pays interest or the total amount of money you owe on a loan. Now keep in mind that whenever you're discussing totals like this, you're talking about the amount of principal plus the interest. So it may be necessary to break numbers in the problem into their principal and interest parts before you use them in the formula. For example, let's say a problem states you have $4,000 in an account. And it asks how long it will take until your account has $4,500 in it. The $4,500 amount is not used in the formula directly. Many people think the $4,500 is the interest I, but it isn't. Since the account started with a principal amount of $4,000, the account only has to earn an additional $500 to be worth $4,500. And we arrived at that, of course, by subtracting the initial amount we started with, $4,000, from the total we wanted to have, $4,500. Then we discover the interest in this problem really is only $500, even though the number 500 doesn't show up in the problem at all. One last thing I would like to share with you. Don't forget that time in our formula should always be expressed in years. So if you're given a time period of six months, don't use six in the formula. You have to convert six months to half a year. So remember to use 0 0.5 for t. Likewise, if you're given 18 months, you should use 1.5 for t and so on. So pay attention to what's provided to you in the problem. Numbers given are not necessarily used directly in the formula to solve that problem the numbers may have to be manipulated somehow to get the values required for use in the formula. Congratulations! You've learned how to solve problems involving simple interest.